Well, hello and welcome back to another episode. It's great to see you all. I hope you're doing well. So today I really just wanted to make a, a quick video looking back at um, something that I did a few months ago, uh, which was a video where I looked at how to go about creating a really great looking CV using LaTeX. So LaTeX, just uh, in case you don't know, is a document, um, what would you call it, a document preparation system. Um, that you can use to create really amazing uh, looking documents. It's used a lot in sort of science and maths communities and that sort of thing because it's particularly good uh, for rendering equations and that kind of stuff. Anyway, this is not intended to be a beginner's tutorial on LaTeX or anything like that. So I'm going to assume that uh, you have a basic understanding of LaTeX already. And uh, yeah, the video I made previously uh, showed how to make a CV that looks like this. So we have, can have a photo and we have our name and some kind of uh, tagline under our name at the top. And then we have this two column layout here for a uh, sort of basic profile and then, you know, education experience and stuff like that. And then on a second page, we have this kind of structure here. And then we can put whatever content we like here on the second page. So that's what we did. Now a couple of things have come up since I made that video. Uh, one is that a few people have commented that they've had great difficulty with it moving stuff around. They can't get everything to appear uh, on the same page um, like it does here. Now as far as I know, every implementation of LaTeX should be compatible, but it is possible of course that there are some differences uh, between systems that I don't know about. I don't profess to be a LaTeX expert by any means, so you know, I can show you the code that I've written that works for me. I mean, this is literally how I do actually create my CV. Um, so, although obviously the content is different. So, I, you know, I show you the code that has worked for me and the output from that. And you might need to play around with it or, you know, experiment a bit to get uh, perhaps exactly the same result. However, I do want to address one issue that I've discovered that can cause problems. So we're going to talk about that. And also, um, I realized, you see, this way that I'd set things up here is actually quite limited. So this way of doing things only works really for one page. If you've got content that spills over onto another page, um, it doesn't handle that automatically and, and that's a little bit limited and since I made that first video I have gone on to improve that so I thought that would be worth talking about today. Okay so let's jump in and let's actually have a look at the uh, .tech file, the LaTeX code uh, that we use to uh, create this. Okay, so this is the code that we have. I did talk about this uh, in much more detail in the previous video. I'm not going to go over it too extensively again now, uh, but I will run through it and just to make sure, I, you know, it saves you having to go back and watch the previous video and then come back to this one, which would be a little bit annoying. So the first line that we have, apart from the comments, of course, is slash document class. And we're using an 11 point font. We want one side, a single sided pages, A4 paper with a title page, um, the document classes article. And here, most importantly, we bring in the T color box package with slash use package. T color box most means that we want to bring in uh, most of the functionality of that box. Um, of that uh, package. Uh, so T color box, we're going to use that to actually create the colored boxes. So the gray box for the profile, let's just go back and have a look. So here we have this dark green box here, and then we have this uh, gray box here. So the, that's done using the T color box package, okay? All right. Uh, we bring in the geometry package to allow us to specify the margins, exactly what we want. I've put really small margins around it, and that might cause issues for printing, I acknowledge that, but it looks really good <laughs> when you view it electronically. Uh, we then define the color that we're going to use for the main title, so that's the green, dark green color I have there, specified in RGB, and we call it just title back. And we set our title slash title quantitative bytes and no date. A slash begin document for the start of the document and then we have our first slash tcb set now this is a command from the t color box package and we tell it that we want the color of, of our frames to be uh, gray 95 percent black and we want the background color to be title back that we've defined there with an arc of zero millimeters so that means it will create boxes with square corners okay we then create the main page header box with slash begin t color box so this code here Okay, this is the uh, dark green color box that we were looking at. So if we go back to the document, that's this section up here. 
And we're going to use, within that, we're going to use mini page so that we can effectively create two columns. So looking back at this, this is essentially two columns here. One column here with the picture, and then a second column here containing the uh, text. And they're defined as two separate mini page environments. I don't know if that's necessarily the best way to do it, but it's the way I've done it. And as you can see, it does work. Um, I did experiment with using tables uh, to do the same thing, but I was not really able to get any good results. But if anyone has any comments or suggestions of other ways of doing that, actually, I would be very interested to hear them. So column one, uh, which contains the picture, we just do slash begin mini page, and we set the width to four and a half centimeters. And then we add uh, some horizontal spacing of minus 0.3 centimeters, just so that we can get our image close to the edge. Of the, of the page, and then you slash include graphics, a width of four centimeters, and so we bring in circle me 3eps So we have to convert our images, our images to encapsulated postscript or EPS format so we can use them in LaTeX, and then slash end mini page. And I'm gonna come back to that comment in a moment. The second mini page here, we have a width 15 centimeters, so this then contains the text quantitative bytes and the tagline underneath that, Okay, so that's the second part. So the first mini page is the picture, and then we have the 15 centimeter wide mini page here that gives us our giant text and our uh, strap line or tagline, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now I've written here, look, that this is very important that there isn't a line break here. And I think this is one of the places where people are potentially been having issues with my code. So apart from these comments, there is no break between slash end mini page and slash begin mini page. And with that, we get the results that you see here, okay? So I want to show you what happens if I put a blank line in there. So let's do that. Let's put an empty line in there, just at my terminal window. Let's have a look, that's what we've got. And let's just compile that latex qbcv.tech. Let that run, okay? And then we're gonna use dvipdf qbcv.dvi to qbcv.pdf, okay? And let's have a look at the result now. Okay, now you see what's happened. Simply by inserting that blank line uh, between those two mini page environments, everything has gone horribly wrong. <laughs> and this is an example actually of how sensitive LaTeX can be to how you actually write the tech file. So it is very important to get it absolutely right. And this is what I mean when I say, you know, you should experiment a bit. If you don't necessarily get the same results as I do, experiment a bit until you find something that works. So let's just show that again. I'm going to take the take that blank line out, simply delete and delete. So I've done nothing, changed nothing. All I've done is taken out a blank line between the slash end mini page here and the slash begin mini page here. Okay, and if we go back to our terminal window, rerun LaTeX and DVI PDF. Okay, and back to here and you see we're back to normal. Okay, so very important that we have no blank lines where there shouldn't be any. Okay, so after that we now have the um, actual content of the first page. So we use a slash tcb set command here again to set the color the call frame to white and the background to white because we don't want it to show up. Again, an arc of zero millimeters because we're having just square corners. And then we have slash begin t color box. And within that, we have another mini page. So within this section, we have two mini pages, one corresponding to this uh, gray panel you can see here, and the other corresponding to the content over here on the right. First mini page, this is actually gonna be the um, content on the left. So we do begin t color box, which covers the whole content of the page. And then we have slash begin mini page at width eight centimeters. So this is the column on the left and use slash V space minus a half a centimeter. There's to shift things closer to the edge. And then we have another T color box. So slash begin T color box. And you'll notice this has a background color of 25% gray and a frame color of white. So this is actually the box that you can see here, okay? And then we have slash section profile and then the text for our profile and the different sections, slash section contact, slash section expertise, slash section interest and so on. And then just end color box and end mini page. And exactly the same as before, very important that there are no blank lines here between these two. And then we do slash begin mini page with 11 centimeters. So this is now going to be this column over here, okay? And 
So that's that. We do slash vspace as before. Uh, the uh, column frame is white and the background color is white. And then we just have a section for our education with an itemized list. Um, that's pretty straightforward, standard LaTeX stuff, so I'm not going to talk about that really. Um, experience, whatever we like, okay? And then just end those environments and end the T color box and the menu page and end the overall T color box. And that's it. That is the code to generate this first page of our CV. Now, I mentioned about the second page and I just want to show you quickly how I did it originally and then I'm going to show you the new, uh, much better way of doing it. So originally, to move on to the next page, we use a slash new page to force things to the new page and then I just did slash begin T color box and within that we used white text, the quantitative bytes, um, the background, sorry, of the color box was cut title back whatever that is, so we're using dark green. And then I've used slash h space slash fill to fill horizontal space between here and here. And uh, then we have curriculum vitae. So the effect of that is to have quantitative bytes on the left and then over on the far right, curriculum vitae. And then we have another T color box uh, into which we then put our text. The problem with this is that it doesn't support any kind of overflowing. If we were to uh, write more content here that can fit on a single page, it doesn't overflow. It is possible to set simply set the T color box to uh, be breakable, so it will break over pages. But the problem with doing that, simply the basic way, is that this title, this section over here, is then not duplicated over onto the additional pages, which I thought was a little bit untidy. I was never completely happy with it, and I thought there must be a better way to do it, and I figured out a better way of doing it. So I'm going to show you that now. What we're going to do is simply comment uh, the original code out. Like so. And then I've got the new code here, so we're just going to bring that back in. Like so. Okay, so we see this just the same as before. We use slash new page to begin a new page, and then we have slash TCB set. Now things are here a little bit different. Okay, so we put in freelance um, to use the freelance um, style, and we then have the uh, color background we're setting to um, zero black and white and the frame to the background color. Now that's quite important here. So instead of setting the frame to black or white as we've done before, we now set the frame color to our title background color, which in this case is the dark green. And we then begin a new T color box. And the first thing is we say it's breakable. It has a title equal to quantitative bytes and then slash H fill curriculum vitae. So as we saw before, what that's going to do is put quantitative bytes on the left and then fill in the horizontal space as much as possible up to curriculum vitae, which will then push the curriculum vitae bit over to the right. And then title after break is exactly the same, okay, because we want that to be the same if we have to break the page. And then after that, the actual content is exactly the same, and then just NT color box. So let's just have a look at what that actually looks like. If I go to my terminal, just run LaTeX, okay, uh, DVI PDF, and let's take a look at it. Okay, so what we see now, so that's the first page, that hasn't changed, and now we see the second page we have uh, a bordered section here, quantitative bytes on the left as we want, curriculum vitae over here on the right, and our content here. And I mean, I haven't created enough content here to overflow on the page, so you'll have to take my word for it, but if you were to fill this up with more content than will fit on one page, it will break across the page, and the time, most importantly, the title here, this bit, uh, will be duplicated on every page, which I think is much better, and I think that's a much neater and a much better way of doing things um, than the way I did it previously. So, like I say, I just thought that would be worth mentioning. Anyway, there we go. That's really everything I wanted to talk about today. Just a very quick video, um, just to uh, refresh and introduce some slightly new content to my uh, previous video on how to make an awesome looking CV using LaTeX. Anyway, I really hope you found the video of interest. If you liked it, please do remember to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't have to miss any future videos. Thank you very much. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's been a great deal of pleasure making it. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.